If you hacked into some company's database, you're a criminal. If you managed to hack into a notorious cyber gang server, you're a hero. Yet in both cases, you're still a hacker. The difference is jail time versus a possible career in ethical hacking. So where's the line? And what is ethical hacking exactly? Generally, hacking is the ability to find vulnerabilities in computer systems or networks. Contrary to the popular belief, you don't have to sit in a dark basement to do so. Yet based on how you use this skill, you can be sorted into one of three categories. Black hat, gray hat, and white hat hackers. The black hat... <laughs> hack hat... Hat hackers. The black hat hackers can otherwise be called cyber criminals. They exploit the vulnerabilities to gain something from them, whether it's money or just a sense of validation. Grey hats take a similar approach and look for exploits in their targeted systems. But rather than leaking data or demanding a ransom, they might exchange what they find for a bug bounty. If that company has a bounty program, more often than not, grey hat hackers show up uninvited and unwanted. White hat hackers are the only ones that wait for an invite. They don't seek to harm the system if they discover a vulnerability. Rather, they use their knowledge and findings to help patch up vulnerabilities or fight against threat actors. That's what ethical hackers do. So uh, naturally you start thinking, what's the catch? What are the benefits of ethical hacking? Ethical hackers could, just like grey hat hackers, go after bug bounties. But careers in ethical hacking often take a bit of a different route. How does that saying go? If you want to stop a criminal, you have to think like one. Have you ever heard of the WannaCry ransomware? It wreaked havoc back in 2017 until Marcus Hutchins, a hacker known as Malware Tech, found a kill switch. He single-handedly prevented the virus from spreading and encrypting already infected devices. So he is your textbook good guy, right? Not really. The praises for saving the internet didn't have much time to sink in because he was soon arrested by the FBI. Well, turns out, prior to being a hero, Hutchins made some malware. Well, you'd kind of expect that from someone with a hacker alias, Malware Tech. However, he was soon released and basically swore his allegiance to the good side. And hey, he now also has a YouTube channel. Hi, Marcus. In the past, such a redemption arc route was a common case. Another famous example is Kevin Mitnick, once known as the FBI's most wanted hacker. He spent five years in prison before setting off a massive career in cybersecurity. He became a famous example of ethical hacking and how far it can take you. Yet these days, it's much more common for white hat hackers to go straight to the cybersecurity highway. Some working companies and others get hired as freelancer experts. But how does ethical hacking work? No, it's not just staring at a computer screen and trying to be clever. Ethical hacking is a whole process. It starts with phase one, which is information gathering. You can either actively explore the system or the servers, or watch as someone demonstrates. The point is to learn as much about it as you can. Phase two, scanning. Basically, you first run some automated scans that try to search for vulnerabilities. Then in phase three, you use the information you gathered to probe the systems for vulnerabilities and gain unauthorized access. And in phase four, you try to go even further to get more access points and privileges. But, and this is a big one, as a white hat hacker, your job is not to do any actual damage. You only find the weak spots and maximize the impact of your attack within reasonable limits. If you succeed, then you move on to phase five, which is paperwork. You have to write a report with your findings so that they can be used to patch up the system and protect it from unwanted intruders. So yeah, you still get to do the fun part of hacking, and I don't mean wearing a black hoodie and staring at Matrix screensavers. You can do that, of course, but you know what else you get? Respect, gratefulness, a sense of power and money. A lot of money. After all, malicious attacks are running absolutely wild these days. Maybe you don't notice, but the big companies definitely do. Discord, Reddit, Facebook, LastPass. Thousands of organizations get hit by various attacks every single day. And there aren't enough good guys and gals who can check their security before cyber criminals can do the same. That's why ethical hacking is important. And there's a great demand for people who can fight back against black hats. But how do you become an ethical hacker? Start with learning the basics of computing and networking and developing coding skills. Ideally, 
You'll cover the whole bouquet of programming languages, Python, JavaScript, MySQL, Ruby, C, and so on. While you can do that yourself, there are plenty of university modules that can get you there, or alternatively, online courses on ethical hacking and cybersecurity. Yet even after you stuff your brain with all of the info, you still need hands-on experience. So look for bug bounties or check the open source programs available on GitHub and don't expect to instantly reach greatness in hacking. Ethical hackers can first spend a lot of time failing to find anything substantial. It's all a learning process. Oh, and don't forget the most important part, the black hoodie. Don't let unethical hackers monopolize the coolest part of hacker attire. I hope by this point you understand what is an ethical hacker and what can we do with ethical hacking. Let me know if you ever thought of becoming one, or maybe you are one already. I'll meet you in the comments. Just don't forget to subscribe on your way. See you there. Cheers.